Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Avinash and in this video series, we are going to discuss uh, the possible interview questions on uh, services. So first I'm going to start with IAM. So then I'll take like oh, services like uh, S3, EC2 and all. Right. So again, these questions uh, may vary from uh, interview to interview, but I uh, these are the possible questions. Okay, so let's start with this IAM. So, but before that, one uh, recommendation. So, if you don't know IAM, directly jumping into these interview questions, right? It's a bit difficult. So, first go to uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we have uh, like you know uh, here. Go to YouTube channel. There is a video on IAM service. You first complete that, so then you can like you know. Uh, easily understand uh, this interview questions all right so the first possible interview question is what is aws iam service so generally if you're taking an aws account we have two types of users one is uh, root user whatever the email id you have created right uh, you use that email id to create your aws account so that guy called as a root user he will have highest permissions on our aws account okay so along with that guy we like you know it's not recommended to use a root user for our day-to-day -day activities okay so like you know for our day-to-day -day activities we can start using this iam service so basically this iam stands for identity and access management service iam is a place where we can create users groups and we can manage that users or groups permissions okay so then the next question we may expect is explain the purpose of iam uh, service in aws environment so as i told you we have two types of users that root user have highest permissions on our aws account sharing that you root credentials to multiple users is not at all a secure thing so it's always recommended to follow least privileges mechanism. So that means whatever the job that guy is going to perform, so we need to provide that permissions only. Giving more permissions is not at all recommended. So if a guy want to work only on S3 service, so then you can give S3 uh, policy only to that user. So we can control user access, right? Uh, here with the help of this AWS IAM service and in IAM what are IAM users groups and roles so IAM user okay here we have an IAM screen we have users whatever the user you are going to create here technically he is a user so to main uh, whenever you are creating this user we need to allocate permissions the permission is nothing but policy if you have like you know uh, multiple users that require similar permission you can add that user to a group so multiple user permission we can manage with the help of group option so then what is this role so basically this role is an option that we can associate it to resources for example you have an ec2 instance so from that ec2 instance you want to access services like a s3 or you want to access DynamoDB or any other AWS service. So instead of configuring an IAM user, you can create a role and you can associate that role to that EC2 instance. So that EC2 instance by using temporary security credentials, it can easily access that S3. So that is a role concept. Now, how do you secure your AWS account with IAM? First of all, using an IAM is a secured option. Second, whatever the IAM users we have here, we can set up password policy, right? We can enforce all these IAM users to use like a, um, a complex password, right? Their password should be minimum eight characters or 10 characters instead of default uh, IAM password policy. You can define like a 10 characters, one uppercase, one lowercase, right? We can set up password expiration. So that user need to rotate their passwords and we can like you know even prevent that user to uh, reuse their uh, passwords their previously used passwords and also we can you enforce this user to set up a mfa for example here 
we we have this iam user and he don't have any mfa device associated by right you know by enforcing them to enable mfa also we can enforce security and also always uh, like you know creating policies and uh, allowing policies uh, allowing access on the resources based on their job requirements only so by following least privileges mechanism and applying mfa and applying uh, uh, complex password policies we can secure our aws account for iam users so how do you grant permission to an iam user so whenever you are creating a user right as part of that user creation we need to allocate a policy right attach policy directly or copy permissions from another user or add to user to a group where that group is going to contain a policy so this policy gave permissions on our aws account okay so those policies written in json format now what is the concept of that iam policy so iam policies generally policy provide permissions basically iam policy is nothing but a document that written in json format that contains set of permissions on our aws account okay so if you don't give any policy to an iam user he can't access anything if you are giving just s3 full access he can access only s3 full access no other services Uh, allowed for that user now what are the different types of iam policies so this iam user have like a customer managed aws managed aws managed job function this aws managed and aws managed job function completely managed by aws difference between this managed and job function aws managed is based on the service aws given all these policies this aws managed job function aws took some standard job roles available in market and they made this policy available so typically or technically this network administrator policy contains or combination of multiple services something like a cloud watch ec2 direct connect so instead of like you know we spending some time and creating this policy aws took some uh, standard jobs and they have given we call them as a aws managed job function then we have customer managed you see here these all are customer managed policies so based on our our custom requirement then we can create this for example you want to create some deni policy you can go and create the deni policy here okay so yeah that is customer created ones so total three types of policies so then what is the principle of least privileges uh, in iam so the mechanism of this least prince privileges mechanism means provide permission really required for that user to perform their day to day activity or their job roles don't give any additional permissions that is what least privileges mechanism okay so how do you manage access keys for iam users so we whenever we are creating a user right we have uh, generally users have two types of accesses one is management console access and second one is programmatic access the programmatic access nothing but access keys whatever access keys you generate okay first of all it's not recommended to use these access keys okay if you don't have any other option yes then you can right so now we have this access keys right so it's uh, whenever the last used and whatever the inactive right so if someone is not using any access keys from so long time it's recommended to deactivate that access keys so that is a recommended step and also we can delete this and we can create another set of keys for this user okay by using this we can secure our uh, access keys and secret access keys if you have a chance better to use iam roles over the like you know this access keys configuration in our ec2 instance and all so what is multi factor authentication in iam so we have this multi factor authentication not only in aws resources for many resources we have this multi factor authentication so it's additional uh, like you know uh, authentication purpose like uh, after entering username and password right we can 
we 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 need to enter 6 digit pin number that is generating in like you know activated device we have physical devices or mobile application softwares like a google authenticator microsoft authenticator or the two factor authenticator so we can integrate that for this iam users or even it's recommended for root user also you observe my account is enabled with this uh, root user multi factor authentication right but this iam user don't have uh, mfa so it's recommended to whatever the user currently i'm working here it's recommended to add mfa for that user also so it's added additional security for the login process so then explain iam role for ec2 instances so whenever we are launching an ec2 instance we have an option called instance profile so now for example you are launching a server within that server you have an application or uh, you want to access some other resources from this server so what we can do while launching or after launching we can associate a role here right so again these roles contains policies whatever the role you are creating in backend it contain policy only based on the policy this role contain so we can access the services after connecting to this ec2 instance okay so it's always this role uses uh, temporary credentials instead of uh, storing access key it is secret access key within ec2 instance to access any service it's highly recommend to use roles so then what is iam federation or uh, what is iam um, so this identity providers option so we have uh, an option to integrate our aws account with uh, our on premise active directories or any other uh, saml uh, providers or uh, like you know uh, saml uh, providers or uh, ldap authentication methods so you can click on add provider you want to go with saml or open id so then what is the provider name so whatever the user we already have in our own federation service that user by using same credentials he can log into our aws account also for example your organization have 5000 users okay so you want to provide access to the uh, aws account access to those users so creating 5000 users and rotating their credentials uh, is uh, definitely a big thing in that scenario with the help of sso service right we have identity center with the help of sso service we can right choose identity source so we have identity sources like a uh, uh, iam service only or we can integrate with active directory or we can integrate with external identity providers idp so these all we call it as a federation services and also we have an option to log in with like you know gmail we can log in with facebook such type of options also that also comes under federation so the next question possible question what is iam policy evaluation logic so whatever policy you contain that policy may contain what whatever policy you have that may contain some allow operations some deny operations remember deny is going to have highest uh, privileges highest uh, uh, priority so you allow 100 times for example at user level you allowed at group level you allowed at resource level you denied then is going to take effect okay you allow 100 times one time you have denied so obviously deny will take effect so that is a policy evaluation logic so implicit allow is one mechanism whatever policy you allow the user can access only that services explicit deny means you allow 100 times you deny one time the deny is going to take effect and how do you create a custom iam policy it's the same process you go to iam screen right uh, create policy now whatever policy you are creating technically that is a customer managed policy or custom policy now i want to create a policy for s3 full access i can select all s3 on all resources then i can create okay so technically this is a custom iam policy why because that is not aws given one if you want to narrow down some permissions yes instead of like you know allowing all these permissions i just want to give some permission to an a user to list and read i don't want to give any write permissions no tagging permissions and uh, 
yeah on all resources or specific resources you can define that also so a customer managed one is nothing but a custom iam policy and what is iam condition element in a policy whenever we are creating a policy okay whenever we are creating a policy for example let's take same as three full access policy i am allowing everything on all resources but on one condition you see here whatever the request coming from one specific ip address i am going to take the sample ip address whatever they mentioned here right so whatever request coming so the request should originate from this specific ip address only then only it allow if request is not coming from this given ip address okay it won't deliver it won't the, the request won't happen so not only this we even have lot of conditions whatever request coming so the request uh, uh, should come from a uh, like you know specific region so if you observe there is an option called requested region for all values in this requested region should equal for, uh, to so this ap south 1 okay so whatever the request coming to this uh, s3 service that should originate or that should come from uh, that should uh, allow if region is set to mumbai only right so such type of conditions ip address condition mfa authentication conditions or requested region condition or uh, source arn or source ip addresses condition or username condition we can define that here right so then how do you rotate access keys for an iam user so we can integrate this with some like you know by uh, by using a lambda function we can get uh, uh, older access keys and uh, we can or manually also you can mention okay so what is iam policy version if you are keep on editing a policy so automatically it creates for example currently here this have only two versions why because initially i have editor but i find some issue so then later what i did i have modified it so whenever you are modifying automatically another version will create whatever the set to default that will take effect and how can you monitor iam events and activities so this we have lot of users here so you want to monitor this user activity if it is user activity then we can use a service called cloud trail so go to cloud trail right so this cloud trail uh, by defaultly enabled in all aws accounts in left pane you select this event history okay and here you click and select username whatever user activity you want to track so you go here you search based on the time right now it is going to give complete list of this user activity that is one option or if you are looking for one specific event for example i want to see uh, stop instance api call who performed or what are the uh, instances stopped so we can choose this event name stop instances so if you observe these are the instances stopped so sometime back i have stopped instances before that also i stopped ec2 instances so with the help of event also we can pick uh, we can see who performed that when performed that or even by giving user name and absolute time range or relative time range also you can identify user activities that is what exactly they are doing if you want to track when the user is logged in when their password is going to expire right if you want to get such type of reports we have an option called credentials report you can simply download this credentials report and evaluate this it contains all user information their last logged in information password next rotation information access key secret access key information that also you can get it from here so then what is aws organization and how does it related to iam see like you know if you have multiple aws accounts so creating an iam user in each and every aws account is obviously a difficult task so in that scenario what we can do instead of creating users here we can implement aws organizations 
In this AWS organizations, we are going to have a management account. So there we need to enable IAM Identity Center. So then what are the accounts part of this organization? Those all accounts will display here. So currently I have only one account, okay? Right. And um, if you have 10 accounts here, no need to create a user in all the 10 accounts. You create users here. Then permissions you manage with the help of this permission sets option. Then you allocate these users to this AWS account. And we are going to get a login URL. For example, this is what my AWS organization account URL. Whenever this any of the created user logs in, it will display all the accounts which is part of this, which is allocated to that specific user. Right. So if you are dealing with multiple AWS accounts, instead of use creating a user in every AWS account and managing you uh, passwords rotating that credentials for every individual AWS account, we can use this AWS organization along with this identity center. That is the best option. I even planning to make a video on this identity center soon. You can expect that in coming a week or two. So then how do you troubleshoot IAM permission issue? Okay, for example, sometimes this instead of interview, like, you know, you may get this in uh, more often in real environments. So some users will come and they're going to complain, hey, Avinash, I'm not able to access that service. I'm not able to access this service. So how we can troubleshoot? Obviously, whatever the user is complaining, you need to evaluate that user policies, whether any conditions is added, right? Or we have handy tool that right policy simulator you can use this policy simulator and you can evaluate which policy is not allowing that user to perform which policy is uh, uh, blocking or, uh, or restricting him to perform that operation that we can get it from policy simulator but manually also you can go here and you can evaluate and remember Denny will have highest permissions highest uh, Priority always, you allow 100 times, you deny only one time, deny is going to take effect. That you can verify. And second, any conditions added, you verify that. And third thing, any permission boundary added. So we have a concept called permission boundary. So if for this user, if any permission boundary is set up, he can access only that service. For example, if you're taking this user, he has administrator access, but technically he can access only S3. Apart from S3, he cannot access the reason permission boundary don't allow him to access any other service okay you verify permission boundary you verify policies you verify any conditions added for that user all right uh, as per my knowledge i have listed uh, um, the possible interview questions on iam service so in similar manner i have a thought to make a lot of more videos uh, on different different services so if you uh, feel this video is helpful uh, right or informative so please, please uh, subscribe to this uh, youtube channel so that gave encouragement to uh, create more rough videos all right thanks for watching all the best for your interviews thank you